I grew up in a pretty privileged manner. I grew up in an upper middle class family. Um, my dad left when I was young um, for drugs. I had the privilege of going to some of the best schools in the country and you know, I had a pretty standard privileged childhood. I struggled with um, undiagnosed bipolar disorder as a kid, so I felt different and I was always looking for something that made me feel the same. Um, that is the perfect recipe for an addict. When you're addicted, you do anything to get what will fix you feeling broken. Really, that's your first ticket into the trafficking world. And this is such a, it's a bigger thing than I have any control over, you know? It's so, it's so massive. And so many people are going through it every single day. What makes my case special? Nothing. Not a damn fucking thing. They find people that are trying to fix their broken. And they'll convince you that this will help fix your broken. And then they'll convince you that you're actually broken beyond repair. And it seems millions of miles away from any kind of type of safety once you're stuck in a trap. So they'll be like, well, I have a homeboy that wants to get his dick sucked. I mean, you could do that. I would, I would resort to selling my own shit before I would let anybody touch me or touch them. So before I knew it, I had about 14 drug addicts known as cockroaches running around my house. So that first house was completely ransacked, ruined. They stole all my shit. I ended up going straight up going to the trafficker's house to live um, because that's the only place I had to go um, without telling anyone that I was still getting high. I isolated myself. I wouldn't tell anyone the truth. There was no knowledge to me of what was going on at the time. And uh, I had to just piece things together when I'd wake up butt naked in random places with hand marks all over me and all my shit was gone sore, bleeding, uh, cuts all over me, scratches, bruises every day. And I, I looked at my phone and I'd been asleep for two days. But sometimes they'd roofie me. Sometimes they would put heroin in my meth. They were um, basically waiting till I passed out. And they would invite a whole bunch of people to gang rape me at my own house um, for money. And... Uh, so they started selling my body because I ran out of shit to give them. I've probably been gang raped by hundreds of people in my life, but I couldn't prove anything. And they have so many tactics to like keep you in the dark that they can't, you can't possibly prove what's happening to you at the time. So if you so much as open your mouth, they'll put a bullet in your head. Or they'll just be like, hello, she's completely high on every drug. Why are you gonna believe this junkie? I had guns held to my head. I've had all sorts of shit happen. And at one point I was so desensitized, I just stared the person in the face. And I was like, at least you would be putting me out of my misery. Thank you. At one point I contacted my father who has uh, been heavy into meth for over 20 years in Houston. And uh, long story short, I found out he is also a trafficker and he trafficked me and sold me to the Aryan Brotherhood in Houston. And um, I can just never see him again. He's a very dangerous person that I thought might be able to help me and protect me. I had a very different relationship with my last trafficker. Um, it's needless to say I have Stockholm Syndrome very badly. So um, I find it very attractive when I sense danger and it's a really sick, sick fucking thing to be possessed with, you know? Not all people who traffic want to do it and not all people who are trafficked want to do it. Like this guy had a full-time job at a burger joint on South Congress. He lived a double life. Like he was a... Sh bright and shiny citizen in a lot of people's eyes. And the last night I was high, which was August 27th of 2016, he gave me a signal and I took it and ran with it. I drove for eight hours straight with traffickers 
following me with cages in the back of their cars all night long. I couldn't. I had fifteen dollars in my pocket, but I couldn't even get out to get gas because they were just waiting for me at the pumps. I had two so, knives in either so of my hands, and I was reading a Bible like I had never had any faith in my life. <laughs> I was like praying to Jesus, please just save me. I am now fourteen months sober, uh, off of meth and alcohol, any drug, anything that alters my personality or my mindset. But mostly, I celebrate 14 months of freedom.